everybody. Good to see you all. all Sorry, who's my announcement? Anyone? Any takers? Who wants to come up and give announcements? <laughs> we have a volunteer, Ben. Would you oh, like yeah, to? it's me. Hi. So I have a zipper on the front, so normally I can put a microphone on, but having the zipper, I got really confused about how to do it, so I was taking me a second. Any of that happened to you guys ever? <laughs> Good morning, Crossroads. Uh, special welcome to you if you're in person or watching us online. My name is Ben. I'm the youth pastor here, and uh, these are the events that we have coming up. First of all, we have our annual Quest Party. That's this Friday, October 6th, from 6 to 9. It's a fall fun night for kids in 3rd to 5th grade. Um, there are flyers out in uh, the hallway there and you can sign up there at the children's ministry desk uh, by the back there. The youth group will be going to Three Cedars this coming Sunday, next Sunday, October 8th at 6. There will be pizza, corn maze, hayride, cider, donuts, and there's a sign up out in the hallway for that or if you sign up in the week when there's not a sign up out there, just let me know and I'll make sure that you can go. Our annual garage sale, um, we are now no longer collecting, we're returning items, so uh, we need some help returning items. Uh, so if you have a vehicle and you could help take a carload or two of the remaining items to a resale shop, like a Goodwill, Salvation Army, whatever, um, then feel free to, after church today, go, go fill up and do that. So it's, all the stuff is in the pole barn in the back on the left side as you walk in. The Crossroads men will be attending a men's retreat, a retreat at Portage Lake Bible Camp on October 13th to 15th. There's flyers and a sign-up sheet at the welcome table. Uh, you can register online at Portage Lake Bible Camp. It's our hope that you'll know what's going on here and that you can plug in as you like. Some of the ways you can learn about events are uh, the bulletin, the welcome table in the hallway, um, and we also have a Facebook page and a, a website. If you would like to receive a weekly email about events, um, just contact us at info at ecrossroads.net or fill out a call to faith form in the bulletin. Uh, please rise as uh, the band does our call to worship. All right. We're just going to get our hearts ready for the service ahead. So you guys read the big bold words with Emma. You looked at me, so you get to do it. <laughs> They're all going to start, you know, avoiding me. Okay. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the downtrodden and despairing. They will rejoice in God's reign forever. Blessed are those who mourn, who are grieving. They will be comforted in God's reign forever. Blessed are the ones who seek justice and righteousness. They will find it in God's reign forever. Blessed are we when we love our neighbors and seek their needs. We will live in God's reign forever. And blessed are we all when we seek to serve others in God's name. Let us worship together, serving one another and serving our mighty God. Amen. Amen. the world but it couldn't fill me a man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough and you came along and put me back together and every desire is now
and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace won't find me again Grab a seat. Welcome to Crossroads. My name is Joe. I'm one of the pastors around here. It is nice to see you all this morning. As we take our offering, we're going to start the uh, baskets in the front. And if you could just keep them moving, uh, Joanne will collect them from you in the back. Here, you ready? All right, good catch. Oh, she's got a baby. I can't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good job, Elaine. You got to be on your toes. That was good. All right. So as we take our offering, we reflect on the words of Scripture and play Frisbee, apparently. Um, whoop, this one. You must each make up your own mind as to how much to give. Don't give reluctantly in response to pressure, for God loves the person who gives cheerfully. We want to give from a place of freedom, and we want this to be a place of freedom. So really... Take those, uh, those words seriously, especially if you're visiting with us. We are just glad that you're here. And we talk about giving our time, our talent, our treasure, our story of what you know, God is doing in our lives and in the world. And so story becomes really important today as, as we go through the message. You see on the cross, there are all these stories, and those are of people who have been, it's not everyone who's been baptized here, but that's like a representative sample, which just reminds us that those stories are important. Next week, we'll have some more baptisms. So if you come to this second service, we'll do some baptisms right, uh, right, at, the be right at the beginning. And one more thing, well, two more things I want to tell you about. One, that guy right there in the blue, that's Pastor Bob Hoy. Some of you recognize him because he's preached here before. The last time he preached here was in May and a number of years ago, Bob grew up in Detroit, lived in Detroit his whole life. And a number of years ago, he put together this bus tour to help us understand some of the history. And so it's called the Ark of Justice uh, Tour. It looks at like some of the history of racism and how we as Christians like move past that, right? So it's good. It's, it's led by him and other pastors. It's, it's an excellent thing. So that slide is wrong. I'm supposed to fix it. Next Saturday is October 7th. That's when we'll be doing that for those of you who want to join us. If you come at, uh, at uh, 8 o'clock next Saturday, we'll be going for that. All right? And then finally, we also use this as a time of prayer. So one couple of things to pray for. One, you know, I was just reminded this week, just all these hot spots in the world. You know, you got Ukraine's been a problem now for a while, and then uh, Yemen's been a problem for a while, and then Sudan 
pops back up. And then this past week, like we're hearing about the Armenian people are, are struggling once again. So that's another hot spot. And then I'm at the hockey game with my son, the Red Wing game with my son last night. He's like, Dad, did you hear Serbia and Kosovo are like it's that looks like it might be starting back up. It's just a reminder that we need God really, really badly in our world. And so if we could keep that in prayer and then also also to keep in prayer, uh, it just, you know, folks in our midst who are hurting. So our good buddy Nancy, who is here uh, at this service today, she lost her sister suddenly uh, uh, just yesterday. So um, if you could just keep Nancy, uh, her her sister Sandy Carpenter um, passed away last night, and it was unexpected. So, if you could keep Nancy and her entire family in your prayers, that would be that would be greatly appreciated. So, I'm going to pray right now, and I'll leave a little pause, and I will invite you um, in that pause uh, to lift any other intentions that you have. If you'd join me, Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for a love that comes and saves and welcomes us. And so we are mindful of people all around the world who are just in these hot spots. And we recognize that you are the God who turns the swords into plowshares and allows the lion to lay down with the lamb. So come into those situations. Bring your justice and your peace. Bring your mercy and your love. Let it guide those situations. Now for our sister and our friend Nancy and for all who are hurting at Sandy's sudden passing. We pray your peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray that as they grieve, they would grieve as people who have great hope in you and your love. And I invite you now to lift other, in, any other intentions that you have. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence among us. Continue to guide us and lead us now as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. All right, kids, before I send you back, you got Michaela back from, oh, yeah, look at the smile goes out into the face. Like, yes, Michaela. Now, you got to be gentle with Michaela. If you guys don't know Michaela, Michaela was plays soccer in college. She plays at Calvin College. She was like the only freshman getting massive amounts of minutes on the soccer team until she had a little knee problem. So kids, as you grab her, stay away from the knee. All right? She's rehabbing this thing, and you got really good news at the last appointment, right? So she should be back uh, in a second. Lydia didn't even wait. She's like, I see Michaela. I'm not, <laughs> not waiting until Pastor Joe releases us. All right, you guys ready to go hang out with Miss Shannon and Michaela? Go ahead. All right, everybody else, let's rise. Let's lift our voices and praise our God.
So this next song, we've done it a couple times in the last month, I think, and um, there's a part of it that just struck me this morning. So I got up way too early this morning. God got me up bright and early, and I was, so I was like, I'm going to go outside and look at creation, right? So I go outside, and I don't know if you guys saw it. Second service, maybe not. I got a lot of nods in the first service that they saw the moon out there this morning, but maybe not this crowd as much. <laughs> but it was shining so bright, and you know, the star, there's some stars around it and stuff, a relatively clear sky. And, and then I was thinking about this song that we're singing today. And I, there's so much in this song um, about God's creation and just how, you know, he made the rocks to cry out. He made the stars to shine, the moon to shine, the sun to come up in the morning, all this stuff. And it's like I was thinking, God, you, you gave us these things because your heart wants to give us good things, and you want to give us joy wherever we can find it, right? Sometimes in this world, like Joe was saying, there's all this stuff going on, but there are these little things around us, and I don't think we even have a grasp on all these things that creation does to praise God, but they're all doing what he made them to do, and if they can do that, so can I. And so as we sing all these words, there's a lot in there, but just see if there's anything that grabs you about God's heart, like, yeah, you gave that to me to... Just give me a little bit of joy today, and then we can keep our eyes open for those things. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. Spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as 
Bye. 
Let's just pray together. Oh, Heavenly Father, all my heart can do is say thank you for your beautiful creation, for your son who came and died on that cross for each one of us in this room. There's not one of us beyond his grasp and in his love. And we sang those words on a hill that you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And it just struck me so much as we're singing this that you knew when you were creating this world, you made that hill where you were going to send your son. And what love that is. So I thank you for that love. Amen. All right, so we um, are singing about creation, and the, as I was preparing for this morning, the one that was kind of hitting me was water, and um, just how I was reading actually about a deer, because we're going to sing as a deer pants for water, and you know, the deer will go to the water for refreshment because he's thirsty. He will go there sometimes to jump in the river and wash himself off and clean himself of his scent as a safety precaution so predators won't get him. He will go in there for healing. And we have living water that we have access to. I know we need this earthly water, but we need the spiritual water. And uh, so we're going to read some Bible verses. You're going to read along. And then we're going to just spend a moment in quiet. And we do this every Sunday. And I know sometimes it might be uncomfortable, but we're just going to have quiet. And whatever you want to do when you're with God in that moment, you know, think about that water and how it washes, how it protects, how it cleans. And just see if there's anything in that that sticks for you. So read along with Kelly, uh, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. And we'll read from Psalm 42, 1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. John 7, 38 says, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. From John 4, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Is 
table you know we sing about God's creation God's love Jen talks to us about this hill where Jesus dies and what I'm struck by is God wants to make it simple for us to understand and so he gives us he gives us bread and he gives us a cup and then he says you're together do this in memory of me take a little bread take a little bit from the cup and remember my love for you and so when we come to the table the apostle Paul tells us what's happening here he says when you're doing this you're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes so to proclaim the Lord's death is to proclaim Jesus as Lord, as God. The God we love, the God we follow, the God we put our trust in. And to proclaim his death until he comes is to proclaim the fullness of that death. That that death does free us from our sins. And it results in new life. And it invites us into that new life and and empowers us to live into that new life. And this, we want this to always be a place where if you're like, but I don't, I don't proclaim that Jesus is God. I don't proclaim that Jesus is Savior. I'm so glad you're here. I would invite you to keep coming. And I would invite you, it's an important part of the journey to struggle with, right? Like, do I believe this? If I believe this, why do I believe this? And we want this to be a place where all those questions can be answered can be asked and answered. But we do it, this simple thing that we do, because Jesus told us to do it. So on the night before he dies, he knows what's coming. But on the night before, he takes some time out and he gives them a simple way to remember. And so he takes bread and he breaks it. And he says, take this, all of you, and eat it. This, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. And then he takes a cup. He says, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This cup is my blood shed for you, shed for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. We're going to pray right now. And then anyone who's comfortable uh, coming up and proclaiming you know, Jesus as Lord and Savior, I invite you to do that. If you don't, you know, if you say, nope, I'm, I'm still figuring that out, that's cool. I invite you to use this as a time of prayer. And if today's the first time you want to say that, well then praise God, see me afterwards or, or Pastor Jen or, or Pastor Ben and we can talk to you about uh, what a life of following looks like. And in this prayer, I'll leave a, a time, um, just a brief pause And in that pause, I'll invite you to confess. And as we confess, what do I mean by that? I just want to call to mind those places where God is still working on me. It always shocks me. There are so many places where God is still working on me. You figure, like, you figure, like, it's one of these days. And yet, God still wants to work in our lives. And I know God is still working in my lives. So I want to confess those places where I need to love God better. I need to love. I need to love my neighbor better. And I confess those places not out of fear that God's going to give me because we just sang about the love of God. And the scripture tells us perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. But I long to be who God created me to be. So I want to confess that longing. So if you join me in prayer.
Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. As your children gathered here, we recognize your love, that it comes, that it welcomes, that it embraces us. Even in the midst of our, when we're struggling, when we're sinning, you love us. And all we have to do is turn to you. And so we thank you for that love. And now I want to turn to you in this time of confession and let you do the work in my life that you still need to do. And I invite you to do the same thing now in the silence of your hearts. We humbly ask you to bless this bread and to bless the cup. Let it remind us of your love and fill us with your love and connect us with your love. May it make your love real and alive and present in our lives so that we can shine your light in all the places you would take us. In Jesus' holy name we pray and all God's people said, if you join me once more in prayer, Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you as you've met us in this time of prayer and song. Continue to guide us and lead us as we turn our attention to your wisdom and your way. And that's all I want us to hear this morning your wisdom, and your way. So if my words get in the way, just let them go away so your light would shine in this time and place. In Jesus' holy name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Sixth through ninth grade, you got Pastor Ben and Michaela at the back door. We are ready for you. And uh, how many, anybody ever been on a hot air balloon? Yeah, a couple of few people. I, I've never done it. Never gone up in a hot air balloon. The thing that uh, Joanne and I, though, have liked to go to the balloon festivals, you know, where they launch off a whole bunch of them and you sit there and they're beautiful and you watch them go. Here's what I learned. I mean, they have a clue where they're going because they know the wind is blowing that way, right? But they really don't know where they're going to land. They just send that thing up into the air, the wind blows, and off it goes. And then they have these chase vehicles that they send after the balloon. So Joanne and I, the couple of times that we've gone to these festivals, we're like, let's find a chase vehicle and chase it. So we're chasing the chase vehicle. And these, they really don't, I think like, well, they got to know they're probably going to this field. They don't because you see them, they're making U-turns. Nope. You know, and they're, they're flipping around and you're following them and you're flipping around or, or, you know, they're suddenly going down one road and then they're doubling back and it just lands where it's going to land. They're just, you get up in the air and you just get blown, you just get blown around. And sometimes life can feel like that, that you're really not in control. And it, things are just kind of blowing and just kind of pushing you around. So we're finishing up a series today called The Story of Us. And we've been in the beginning of scriptures. We've been in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And as we, as we talk about the, this story, this in the beginning story, today it's, I really want to focus on the story and, and where God is in our own story. So, you know, if you've been around here the last couple of weeks, Pastor Dave and I have just like, there's been point after point after point. They just keep coming. And we've been trying to lay this foundation that then is going to launch us into like the next nine months of messages where we're going to be coming back to some of this foundational stuff. But let me, let me talk about the story for just a second because when we do Commitment Sundays, next Sunday, We'll do one of our Commitment Sundays, and there'll be some baptisms. So when you come next Sunday, if you come to, well, it'll be at both services, but we'll have the baptismal, you know, right there where the communion table is right now, and, and we'll have some baptisms. And part of the baptisms is the stories that go on the cross. Now, those aren't all the people who have been baptized at our church, but that's a number of the people who have been baptized at our church, and we put, we put their stories there as just a remembrance of God is in our lives, God is in our story, and God is, God is working with us. And a lot of times, we, we take our story down to, and it's an important part of the story, don't get me wrong, but we take our, the story down to the point in my life when I recognized, you know what, 
when, when Scripture talks about sinner, it's kind of talking about me. I've got some ways that I don't, that I struggle. I got some things that aren't so good, and I repent. I commit my life to Jesus Christ, and that's a huge part of our stories. For, for those of us who grew up in the church, that's my story. I, I grew up in the church, but I still had to come to that point where I'm like, no, they are, they're talking about me, and, and, and I need God in my life. And the thing about that I really want to encourage you on is that story keeps going and going and going. God keeps molding us and shaping us and growing us. So we're going to, st- we're going to jump to the end uh, of the message as I ask you this. What's your story? And so let me give you the call to faith. I know it comes at the end, but it's coming early today. What's your story? And, and hang on. Got it? You want to take it now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, here's some questions that you can ask about this. One, for those of us, it's good to remember when you came to that point where you said, you know what? I need God. That's a, that's a good thing to remember. But also, where have you experienced God in your life? As we're going to be, we, like I say, I, I know this because people came up to Dave and I after the last few messages and I was like, that was really good, but that was a lot. You know, like you had, you, you had a lot of points in that. So today we're just going to focus on the story. Less points, all right? But where have you experienced God in your life? How has God been real in your life? What is God teaching you now? And I think this next one is the most important. What is God teaching me about me? My wife Joanna and I have been married, it's 40 years now, and I always know at any given moment in time what God is teaching Joanne about Joanne. I, I, I have this down, and I'm happy to share it. But, <laughs> the, and, and I, now I need to say and nothing. That's what God is teaching Joanne about Joanne right now. She's got it all together. But, but what I need to say is, what is God teaching me about me? That's the harder one. And so that one, to me, what is God teaching you about you? I think that's a key, that's a key question for us as we, as we reflect on who is God in our lives and the story. So the story of the last month around here, is, as I've said, has been a lot of this foundation laying to get us through. In October and November, we're going to be into the stories of the Old Testament. Those will continue some in, in uh, December and then we'll turn to the stories of Jesus and the Gospels. But as we're going through those stories, the things to remember are we have to recognize God's grace, God's goodness. That, And here's the thing. Yes, we have that moment in our lives where we commit ourselves to following Jesus Christ, and we, re, we make that recommitment over and over and over again. And we're invited to participate then with God. Too often what we, we, we go with, we give our life to God, that's it, it's over. But now I'm, in, I'm invited to participate with God and walk with God. And today, as we get to some of the story, I'll talk, I'll talk about just sticking with God. And then learning to lead with our faith identity. We have all these other identities that society is encouraging us, you know, to put on but I'm a Christian, and, and in everything I do, I want to say, how do I live this out as a Christian? So that's an idea that Pastor Dave and I have been harping on the last few weeks, and we will keep coming back to it over the next nine months here. And then understanding Scripture. So we spend some time on that. And we'll, as we go through the stories, we'll show you different ways of how we understand Scripture so that you're not always dependent on us, right? You can, you can do it on your own. You can dive into the scriptures and, and get an understanding of what's going on. And then understanding this as a journey. To repeat myself from just a minute ago, 
We have that moment where we give our lives to Christ, and then the journey begins at that moment. God has more and more that he wants to teach us and how he wants to mold us and shape us. And so we, we do that with this thing. You can get it over on the information rack, but this, this circle, and the point of the circle is we want you to understand the journey, that this is a journey. It's not just this, a one-time commitment. That one-time commitment is important. But then we continue to walk with God day by day, and we let God mold us and shape us and lead us. So the one line of Scripture I want to I use this week as we talk about dropping into crisis is, because I'm going to talk on crisis in just a second, but John the Baptist, next week, this John the Baptist will be the main story. This week, I'm just going to give you a line from him. Kind of how he sums up what he's on earth to do. John the Baptist comes before Jesus. Like I said, we'll learn a lot more about him next week. But he comes before Jesus, and everybody is like wanting him to be the guy, so to speak. Are you the guy? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one we're supposed to be following? And he sums up the whole thing like this. He says, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Now, pause for a second. Because one of the things Pastor Dave and I have been talking about is how, how our world, we bring that into the, into the Bible and how we, just, we can't help it, right? So we always ha- we're always learning how to put Scripture into context. Put that into our world right now. He must increase, but I must decrease. Does that sound like how our world operates? Right? I mean, it's like, no, it's all about me. And it's about my rights and about what, what I need. So me, 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 me. I must increase and everybody else must get on board. Okay? With me increasing. That's kind of how we do it. But in Christ, he must increase, but I must decrease. And so... so So what happens in me as I go around, I'm going to say oval, Andy, because you're in the room. I usually say circle. Andy, uh, going around, (laughs) it's an oval. (laughs) As I go around the oval, it is an oval. He's right. He's not making it up. (laughs) As I go around, I go back to my joke about, I always know what God, you know, is teaching Joanne about Joanne. Okay, But one of the things I had to learn in my marriage and that God taught me is like, you know, it's a partnership, not a dictatorship. And you you don't, the world isn't great if everything works your way. The world works out great when you two come together and work together and learn from each other and grow from each other. Like, I put her in your life for a reason. She might have some things that you could grow from. See? He must increase, but I must decrease. As I got that, then I could enter into my marriage in a different way. And then that, that goes and then that goes beyond marriage. It goes beyond I mean I, I I'm not saying God's done with me yet, but it's been a lifetime of really learning how to listen and listen well to other people because he must increase, but I must decrease. Get that pride out of me so I can be who God has called me to be. And there's, a, there's, there's this beautiful line. It's from a songwriter called Joni Mitchell. I know some of the younger people are like, Joni Mitchell? I don't know Joni Mitchell. It, you find her, and actually the song was covered by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. That's another group that you might know. You, you know you'll find, if, you're, if you don't know any of those names, you'll find them on like the classic rock station, or as some of us like to call it, the music station, right? So, um, <laughs> so but she has this great line, and we forget sometimes in, in the intensity of the moment that things 
you know, things have, there's been struggles in the past. And so like the late 60s, the early 70s, it was a rough time. And, and there's a lot of violence in our society and a lot of craziness. And, and it felt, you know, like, you know, the whole society was shaken. And so she writes this, she writes this song. And here's the lyric. And I'll just hear this. This, we are stardust, we are golden. We are caught in the devil's bargain. And we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Like, I, I don't know, like that's pretty much scripture, old, new, in a lyric. Because when I say he must increase, but I must decrease, I mean, I want to get back to the garden. I mean, I want to get back to who I was created by God to be in this time, in this place. And, and the parts of me that are full of pride, that are full of it's got to be my way, the parts of me that are full of greed that I've got to have or the lusts that I've got to have, I want that to decrease so that Jesus Christ can increase so that I can, and, 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 and as we're saved, God is bringing us back to the garden. I'm, yeah, you can see, all right, I got to give her proper credit there. All right, she fell out of the, the thing, all right. So he must increase, but I must decrease. I, I need to say this as I go on here. Uh, so I'm, as I show you now what it looks like to have crisis drive us around the wheel, I, you know, I've got some tough stories. They, they might be tough, especially if you're a parent who has lost a child. And I know that story of, of people. Um, we'll be, I'll be talking some about that. And so just, just, just so you know, and um, so... He must increase, but I must decrease. And the crisis throws us into curiosity. So, so I was a school teacher for a lot of years. And in fact, you know, we, we talk about like, how, you know, how you, you grow up, right? And so I did grow up. I, I grew up in the church like a lot of you. I grew up in a Catholic church. And I, I remember my sophomore year of high school uh, have, feeling this. There was a, a missionary from Central America comes up. He's showing us these orphanages. He's running. He's doing all this stuff. And I, I, I thought I felt a call to ministry, you know. But then I was a boy in a co-ed Catholic school. And, and you know. I was attracted to the girls in the co-ed, co and I'm like, well, I thought, I think I'm hearing a call here, but I'm Catholic. I think I might not be hearing correctly because I, <laughs> cause I, I might like to be married someday, and that's not going to be, so I just put it, I just, nah, I'm not going to be a pastor, that's not my call. But I, I can be a school teacher, so I'm, I'm a school teacher. And I really, I enjoyed being a school teacher. It, it, it was fun. I, I taught and I coached hockey and loved coaching hockey. It just it was fantastic. So, but I remember I, I was 35 years old. So you can, you know, that's a while ago. But I was 35 years old and a crisis just knocked me for a loop. And... It was it was the death of one of my one of my students. Um, he, but when I say one of my students, so so Justin, I coached him in hockey from when he was a little guy, and then he came through, you know, my classroom, and and then when he was a freshman in high school, it was one of those half days that they have at the high school, and a kid in the neighborhood, you know just turned 16, got a new pickup truck, and like, let's put everybody in the back of the pickup truck, and that didn't go well. The, the pickup truck flips over, and, and Justin is killed, and some of the other kids who were also my students were hurt. 
And, you know, I, I was a believer. I went to church. I, but it was the gut punch of all gut punches, you know. I, Justin is r- r- roughly the same age as my son, Tony. So, you know, like literally the puck marks in my basement, some of those were put there by Justin. And I remember, like, I couldn't, I didn't finish the school day. Like, my my principal came down, because it happened, it was that the high school had a half a day. I was teaching middle school, they had a full day, so the principal, when he heard I was struggling, he just came down, took over my class, and Joanne came up to my work, and we just drove to the hospital because we didn't know what else to do. And I, I talked to a couple of the students, and, and it was so painful. And my question was, you know the question, because we asked this question. God, I, how do you let that happen? How is that happening? Why is that happening? How does this make sense? So now I'm in crisis. And I can drop out or I can stick with God. But honestly, it seemed that crisis is, is a big part of what pushed me toward being a pastor. Because as I, instead of dropping out, I dove in and I'm like, I got to understand. I got to figure this out. And so I was diving into the scriptures. I was diving into books. I was trying to learn. And what I'll never forget, one of my students, um, Danielle, it was like two weeks after the accident. And there's only, you know, maybe another two weeks left in school after that. But she, she looked at me and she said, Mr. Muzzy, you've changed. And I couldn't articulate it, how I had changed. I still, maybe 25 years later, I can kind of sort of articulate it. I don't know. Um, But that change drew me toward God. So now, I, you know, it's, hey, you're a school teacher, and would you oversee the children and the youth at church? Sure. You know, at that time, the youth pastor, well, we had two volunteers, one volunteer for middle school, one volunteer for high school. So can you kind of oversee that? You know, that's what you do. So sure, I'll do that. And that struggle, I'm still like, you know, working through that. I'm starting to take the seminary classes. I'm starting to learn, you know, how to do this thing of being a pastor. But you know how it is. You're just thrown in. You got to work. So you got, you know, you got stuff to do. So the first thing that the first difficult situation is, hey, Joe, uh, Victoria, who I had known Victoria for a number of years um, because she was with Joanne and I at our previous church, a church called New Horizon that came and joined up with Crossroads. So I had known her. And she was struggling with cancer. So they're like, Victoria's struggling with cancer. And you're the pastor now, so go hang out with Victoria and go help her out. So on our, um, on the stories, the people at the top are the people who have been baptized here and have gone to be with the Lord. And so Victoria is there. Her story is there. And her story it's just so sweet until it was written by, uh, you know, 11, 12-year-old. Um, so here I am trying to figure out how God lets these bad things happen. And then I'm just thrown in. And you, you want the big 
aha, epiphany moment, like, oh, I, I can connect all the dots. But the reality was, I just hung out with Victoria. And I w- learned and experienced so much and so much goodness and beauty. So Victoria was a kid, which meant she wanted to play. So that's all we would do. You know, um, it wasn't these big, long, deep discussions. It was, because, okay, she passed away in 03, so roller blades, roller blades were a big deal. Joe, I want to go rollerblading. We're going rollerblading. We got our rollerblades on. We went over to Kensington, got our rollerblades on. She couldn't, um, it wasn't even 100 yards. It was maybe 50 she would go, she would stop. We, I'd let her catch her breath again. We would just sit there, hang out. Then when she could go again, off we'd go. And, we'd, and she, she loved Uno, the one where it spits cards at you, right? She thought that was the funniest thing in the world. This Uno is going to spit cards at you, right? And so we would do it, and the Uno would spit cards at us, and we would laugh. And they're really, she was just, she had this beautiful faith. You see it in her story. And part of her story is, you know, she just thanks everybody in there for supporting her as she's going through cancer, you know? And she was, you know, the end was coming, and she was, she was getting weaker. And Joanne and I and her mom uh, and her stepdad, the four of us, took her to Toronto to see the Lion King. You had to, at that time, it was, Lion King was much newer. It was just in New York and Toronto. And so if you were going to see it, she wanted to see it. That's where you're going. So we go, and Joanne's on one side of her. I'm on the other. And we're giving, you know, her, her mom and dad a, a break. Uh, so they're, they're taking a break night, and, and we're in the theater. And, and I think she's asleep because she's sitting there, and her eyes are closed. And, but at the end of every song, she just, you just see her little hands go like this. It was so beautiful. She just was right there the whole, the whole way. So... So this whole thing of, the whole crisis of, God, why do you let bad things happen? And then I'm in the middle of this. Here's the thing. I never, that question wasn't answered. And that question, if you go to Scripture, that question really isn't answered in Scripture. The answer in Scripture is, we can't know. Go back to what Dave was talking to us about last week with the, you know, that tree. There, there's a limit. We are created in the image of God, but we are still human beings, and we can't know the whole picture. But what I learned was the answer to a different question, which is, where is God when we're hurting? Where is God when we're struggling? And the answer is standing right next to us. And that God doesn't leave us. And that when the scriptures say nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that you have found in Christ Jesus, that's true. Because so we, because I experienced it, I witnessed it. So, so her her mom, you know, you're a mom, and you're losing your only daughter, who's twelve years old, and you're just you're struggling. Yeah, right. How do you? 
how do you do that? So I'm walking beside, I don't really know what, I'm just doing it, right? You just show up and you. So the doctors say, okay, we've done, we, it's time. We have to say that we can't do any more. They did send her file. They, she was over at Mott's. They sent her file down to St. Jude's. And St. Jude's said, there's nothing, we're beyond that point. It's beyond that point. We, this type, the way this has progressed, we just... So we're sitting because, you know, Victoria's at school and then her parents and I and her grandparents and the doctor, we're all sitting there. And then so, so who's going to tell her? And then everybody looks at me. And, and I'm like, okay, what are you going to do? Right? So, so I tell her, you know what, we have this, we have the discussion. And like I say, it wasn't a ton of all these deep discussions. It was let's play, let's play basketball. Let's play Uno. Let's hey, let's go get ice cream. But there were a couple of the, you know, hard discussions. And I remember, and I felt like a fraud when I said it. But she she's like, she's looking at me and she's crying, and I'm crying, and everybody in the room's crying, of course. And and she says, Why isn't God answering my prayer? And I say, he, he's going to answer your prayer, just not here. And I, I felt like a fraud when I said it. But then I experienced, here's what I mean. Her, so her mom, again, was like, okay, when, that, when the time comes, when the hospice says it's time, um, would you stay? And I said, yes, I'll stay. And, you know, you think that's going to be a day or two. It ended up being a week. And I saw where God was. And God was there. And God was so real. And, and so I, I come over. Donna, her mom, calls and says, hospice says it's time. Come over. So I come over. And the house is packed because everybody, this is a kid, you, some of you in this room remember her, and she was awesome. And, and so I show up, and she wants to get away from the crowd because she's got something to tell me. So she says, she says, uh, Joe, I got something to tell you. Go, okay. Just come to my room. So I go, to, go back into her room with her grandma. She says, I see a boat and a river and a tree. What is it? I say, honey, that's where you're going to go meet Jesus. Right there. And then as the week went on, she, she wanted like I said, remember what I said, she just wanted to play. She would say, I'm going to play with the kids. And this little cancer-ridden body that literally, I'm not exaggerating, looked like it had survived the Holocaust. I mean, like, just, not when she said, I'm going to play with the kids. Because then her face just kind of lit up and, and glowed. And I could just tell she was at peace. It was so. And then later in the week, she would say, I'm going to play with Jacob. And Jacob was the little boy who would sit next to her at, and they would get chemo together and they would chat as they got chemo together and he lost his battle before she did. And she said, I'm going to play with Jacob. God was right with her the whole way. I don't get it. I don't know why that happens. I don't know why Justin was in that car accident. But what I know is that God is near to the brokenhearted. And when we say stuff, where you go, I'll go, 
And we're and we're, we sing, if you'll do it, so will I. The call isn't necessarily the answers. The call is to show up where people are hurting. And, and, and to remember the truth that nothing, nothing ever in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that we have found in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Not our fears about today, not our worries about tomorrow, not life, not death, nothing. And see, let that be our story. That when the crisis comes, we don't get it, but with tears in our eyes, we just show up. And look, don't, you're gonna, when you show up in those places, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to feel like a fraud. You're going, to feel like you, you're going to feel like you have nothing good to say. So here's a tip. Don't say anything. Okay? Because <laughs> part of you is going to want to say, God has a plan, honey. And you don't, yeah, probably, but you don't know what it is. All right? Because Scripture tells us we can't know. And that's Okay? I can't know the answer to that, but I do know the answer to, is God good? Yes. Because faith is being certain of what we hope for. It is evidence of things not yet seen. So when I'm confronted with that accident, I don't see it. But I stick with God. And I let God take me around the circle, and I let God get me to a a better place. And I let God restore me and help me to hope again and help me to love again and help me to go on again. That's the call of the church. Yeah. Thanks. Linda experienced a tragedy with her daughter. That's why I start off with, because she's not the only one in the room. That's why I start off with. Um, So, so what's your story? How is God working in your life? How is God real in your life? I want my story to be that I just stick, that God keeps sending me around the oval. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but each time I go around, I learn more and more about who God is and how God loves so that I can then love like that. And I can be who God has called me to be in this time and in this place. And that we as a church can be who God has called us to be in this time and in this place. If, you, if one of you gets the answer to why bad things happen, you can clue the rest of us in on it. All right. In the meantime, let's go where God's going. Let's be where God is. And let's be the people who bring love and light into this world. And all God's people said, amen. God bless y'all. Have a good week.